Known to many as the man who changed the overall sound of rock music, Jimi Hendrix was much more than a guitarist and vocalist. When he came into the limelight of the American music scene in 1967, Hendrix carried a huge responsibility of delivering an authentic rhythm and blues experience, as well as playing rock and roll music. Up until this time, rock and roll had largely been associated with the white communities and white artists. Although this association seemed to be original, much of popular rock had been derived from the traditional sounds of the black rhythm and blues, or R&B music. It had only been remarketed to young white people through stars like Elvis Presley. During the late 1960s, America was in a race-based struggle between blacks and whites. The struggle for equality opened the door for Jimi Hendrix to ease the tensions during the struggle through his music. Hendrix presented a new philosophy about the racialization of music. As a black performer with a mainly white audience, Hendrix performed music that was previously isolated to the black community. This was a very radical concept for the time period, and this new idea led to a new view of racial rights in society, the integration of music, and furthermore, the integration of race in America. On November 27, 1942, James Marshall Hendricks was born in Seattle, Washington to Lucille and Al Hendricks. At the time, Al, Jimmy's father, was in the Army and stationed at Fort Benning in Georgia. Growing up, Hendricks was often moved from house to house on account of his mother's unpredictable lifestyle of going out and constantly partying. When he was just two weeks old, his mother gave him away to a Miss Dolores Jeter. Jeter would take care of Jimmy for the first four years of his life, but even while under her care, he was looked after by several others, including Jeter's sister, a Mrs. White, and a Mrs. Waltz, all while staying in the Seattle area. When Al Hendricks returned home from the war, Jimmy was sent to live with his parents in Rainier Vista housing projects in Seattle. While living with Al and Lucille, Jimmy was mostly taken care of by his father, and his parents often separated from each other over various disputes and arguments. This would be the norm for most of Jimmy's childhood. Growing up, Hendricks was surrounded by music. He played a variety of instruments, including the harmonica, violin and other strings, and even the piano. It was in the summer of 1958 that Hendricks became infatuated with the guitar, saying in a later interview that, quote, he learned to play on an old guitar which belonged to one of his father's friends who would come over and play cards, end quote. Over the years, Jimmy would learn guitar by playing along with old 45 records by ear. In his high school years, Hendrix would play guitar in a variety of different bands until he enlisted in the Army in May 1961. Hendrix was stationed in Fort Campbell in Kentucky. There, he joined a group with fellow servicemen to play music. Hendrix was released in July 1962 with an honorable discharge from the Army after breaking his ankle in a training session. Shortly after, Hendrix moved to Nashville, Tennessee. This would begin Jimmy's long stint playing gigs in the Deep South at segregated black establishments known as the Chitlin Circuit. While in the South, he would play in various groups like the Isley Brothers, with Little Richard, King Curtis, and even with B.B. King as a rhythm guitarist. It was while playing with these groups that Jimmy was discovered by producer and then drummer for the English rock band The Animals, Chaz Chandler. Chandler was so impressed by Hendrix that he convinced him to come back to the United Kingdom when The Animals finished their tour of the United States, and on September 24, 1966, they left for England. It was here that Chandler paired Jimmy up with Mitch Mitchell and Noel Redding to form the Jimi Hendrix Experience. While in England, the experience, as they were called, gained a large amount of recognition with songs like Hey Joe and Purple Haze. Jimmy often attributed the success in England with the, quote, open-mindedness of the people and his ability to play as loud as he wanted, end quote. This success was not as great in the United States at the time because of the fact that the experience was fronted by a black man. Other bands such as Cream, The Animals, and The Rolling Stones experienced huge amounts of success in the States playing the same blues-based rock that the experience was playing. The only difference was that all of these bands were fronted and made up of all-white males. Hendrix would not experience much success in the United States until 1967, when he played the Monterey Pop Festival in Monterey, California. The festival was comprised mostly of all-white acts. 
Hendrix was one of two black performers to play, the other being iconic R&B artist Otis Redding. Jimmy's powerful guitar playing and wild stage antics caused quite a stir when he burst onto the American music scene at Monterey. Shortly after his appearance in the festival, Hendrix's U.S. popularity skyrocketed, and the experience began playing gigs across the United States and Canada. During his time touring, Hendrix became extremely popular with white audiences, white males in particular. Because he was the only black frontman playing the blues to white audiences at that time, many interviewers seemed to key in on the question of the authenticity of the so-called white blues. In one interview, Hendrix defined the blues as, quote, you can have your own blues. It doesn't necessarily mean that black folk blues is the only type of blues in the world. It all depends on how your ears are together and how your mind is and where your ears are, end quote. Hendrix had a knack for deflecting questions that would portray him as a black radical in favor of the civil rights movement. Interviewers would ask him questions about how he felt about the events that were occurring in the late 1960s that had to do with civil rights, but Hendrix would always take a neutral stance when in the public eye, stating, quote, I just want to do what I'm doing without getting involved in racial or political matters. I know I'm lucky that I can do that. Lots of people can't, end quote. And when asked, do you get much into what's happening with black people? He replied, quote, I don't get a chance. I'm not thinking about black people or white people. I'm thinking about the obsolete and the new. Some people just weren't made to live together anyway. That's what you see when it, what comes out in riots and frustrations and so forth. It's so screwed up, end quote. Hendrix would maintain this apolitical stance throughout his career up until his death in 1970. Because of Hendrix's widespread popularity in America during the late 1960s, the pop music industry was open to a variety of new black acts in the early 1970s, many of which were R&B and funk acts such as Sly and the Family Stone, Parliament Funkadelic, Cool and the Gang, the Isley Brothers, the Commodores, and the Jackson 5, to name a few. These acts owe their mainstream success to Jimi Hendrix and his success in opening the minds of white America to quote-unquote black music. Many people found the political ideas that Hendrix preached in his music to be a good argument for unification of race and to love one another. Songs like Machine Gun spoke out against the real issues like the Vietnam War and focused less on black versus white conflict. Jimmy considered himself to be a preacher of a new quote-unquote electric church, this meant he wanted to unify groups and end hostilities through music, and in a way, he did. Because of his persistence and belief in human unity, many of the black artists that came after him were able to enjoy success and have their voices heard by both white and black audiences. Jimi Hendrix not only paved the way for musical equality, but set an example of peace and love for all people. His constant message of love influenced many people in the hippie movements of the late 1960s, and as a result, the surrounding subcultures were affected. But his message did not just affect the 1960s. Many people today enjoy his music and hear the same message that was preached at Woodstock in 1969. The Jimi Hendrix experience was not just a name that his band performed under. It was a message, a belief. The melding of quote-unquote black culture with what was previously considered to be a white institution created the grounds for equality in all fields that were previously segregated. Hendrix not only broke down the barriers that separated people, he opened their minds to a new philosophy on how we should go about loving one another instead of hating and destroying that which brings us together.